Hello everyone, this is Mitch Steele, and today we're going to be touring Horizon, a 1989 Hans Christian 38 traditional with the Telstar keel. She was designed by Harwood Ives and built by Hans Christian Yachts at the Xingfa Boatyard in Taiwan. The 38 traditional Telstar is a large displacement blue water cruiser, and Horizon has crossed plenty of oceans with her current owners. It's been to both the North and South Pacific, as well as a circumnavigation that included the South Pacific Islands, East Asia, the Indian Ocean to South Africa, across the Atlantic to the Caribbean, through the Panama Canal, and ultimately ending up here in Ventura, California. All that to say that if you're looking for a boat that you can sail anywhere, the Hans Christian 38 fits that bill. There were three models of the Hans Christian 38. The original 38T, the 38 Mark II, and the Telstar 38 Traditional. The Telstar included some modifications to the keel in order to improve the boat's ability to point higher and perform better in lighter winds. These alterations included bringing back the leading edge of the keel, a cutaway at the aft portion of the keel, and the addition of a skeg mounted rudder. The Hans Christian 38 has a very traditional design with lots of teak surfaces. On Horizon, all of the trim, hatches, and handrails have been kept up very nice and appears to have been recently revarnished. The decks are covered in teak, which have been left to weather to a nice gray. The seams between the teak appeared to be intact. I know that from reading the owner's blog that the decks were routinely washed by hand using a hand mitt versus a brush so as not to force open the grain in the teak, which would allow salt and dirt to embed into the wood. Approaching the bow, we have this very large Samson post, which is integrated into the components of the bowsprit. The electric winch hoists a Delta 55 anchor with 180 feet of chain and an additional 250 feet of road. Horizon is cutter rigged with a factory made folding bowsprit. The bowsprit allows the jib stay to be put out further than the bow, giving greater balance with the stay sail. The folding feature is also great when holding up in a marina where dock rates are figured by the foot. You can quickly fold up the bowsprit and reduce overall length by a good six to seven feet. Horizon is rigged for the purist. Both the head sail and stay sail are hanked on and each has its own stowage bag that allows you to keep the sails on deck and ready to deploy when needed. Raising and lowering of the halyards as well as reefing are controlled at the mast. However, the sheets and traveler controls are rigged back to the cockpit. The mast has a single set of spreaders and mast steps for making climbing the mast a little more secure. Hmm, what do we have here? Maybe some treasure? Oh, it's the propane locker. Well, that's cool. On either side of the mast, you have pulpits to help keep you secure when working on the mast. The storage boxes and belaying pins are both practical and add a bit of classic style. Moving aft, we have the butterfly hatches, allowing a great deal of light and fresh air into the cabin. There is also a rack for storing the dinghy on the deck. And here we see the massively built Traveler and Boom Gallows. Both have a beautiful patina. All of the canvas looks to be in good shape, as does the Isinglass. Horizon has a canoe stern, which is fitted with a pulpit that houses the stern anchor. She also comes with a monitor self-steering wind vane. The teak wheel is mounted to a fabulously patented binnacle, which houses the engine controls and compass. Now, before we head down below, I do want to address an issue with Horizon. She recently started to develop gel coat blisters on the hull above the waterline. Now, there are some makes and models of boats where this is a common occurrence, but in my research, I cannot find any mention of anyone having this type of blistering issue on a Hans Christian 38. 
Now, what would cause this to occur? It's really hard to tell. If there were other HC38s with this issue, you could pin it down to something like inferior materials or a flaw in the build process. But since this is a one-off issue, it could be a variety of things. Based on the reputation of the Hans Christian, it seems unlikely that it would be any of the aforementioned issues. It is possible that weather conditions were not ideal when the gel coat was applied, but who knows? On a positive note, blisters typically do not indicate a structural problem. They are unsightly and a nuisance, but it's unlikely that the boat is going to suddenly start springing leaks or delaminating. In this case, however, I do suggest having a knowledgeable professional take a look and come up with the best plan for addressing the issue. Okay, with that behind us, let's go down below. As you might expect from a traditional boat design, there is a lot of wood. On horizon, it all looks to be in very good condition. Along the sides, there are continuous handholds integrated into the trim molding, a real practical feature. I've been on a number of newer boats that don't even include any handholds in the cabin, making it quite an adventure to move about while underway, even in modest seas. Boy, these knee braces are very impressive. The cabin is heated via a Dickinson diesel heater, which gets its fuel from a small diesel tank in the closet just on the other side of the bulkhead. Now here we are in the cozy forward V-berth. There's opening port lights allowing adequate lighting and ventilation. On the starboard side are the twin hanging closets, and here is the tank for the heater that I mentioned earlier. On the opposite side is the head with a manual pump toilet and sink with a separate tiled shower section. Alright, heading back through the main cabin, we have the dining area. First, how about this beautiful brass compression post? Wow! Looking towards aft, I like the openness between the galley and the dining area. The large U-shaped seating area is great for large dining parties and the map insert on the table is great for reminiscing about where you've been or for casual planning to the next destination. Back on the starboard side, we have the heater. There's ample storage and the settee. Again, more storage and a buffet cabinet for meal prep, food service, and mixing cocktails. On the port side, we have the U-shaped galley. The countertop is marble, a very nice touch. Dual stainless sink with both fresh water and seawater faucets. Here is the Norcold 12 volt refrigeration unit with deep wells for lots of cold storage. We have a gimbaled three burner force tan propane stove and oven. There's plenty of above the counter storage and a deep well for more dry food storage. There's also plenty of storage below the counter. Now under the sink is access to the engine. Horizon is powered by a 66 horsepower Yanmar turbo diesel with 3,700 hours on it. There are several doors and hatches which allow for easy access to the main components for routine maintenance. On the starboard side is the nav station with the electrical circuit panel, communications, and radar. Under the tabletop is storage for charts and traditional navigation tools. There's also an additional storage compartment below for other electronic components or things you need quick access to. Lastly, on the port side, we have the aft quarter berth. It's currently being used for storage, but it can accommodate two people comfortably. This concludes our tour of Horizon, a 1989 Hans Christian 38 traditional Telstar. Have a great day and happy sailing.